everyone. This is Heba Amin. I'm going to introduce to you uh, the, an introduction on conflict management. Our objectives, we will recognize the types of conflict, recognize how does a conflict cycle spiral into a crisis, and uh, know how to apply constructive conflict management strategies such as the TKI tool, the MTI tool, and learn how to break the conflict cycle and identify the steps for conflict management. And finally, how to manage the escalating power struggles. Firstly, we should know what are the types of conflict. Actually, there are positive and negative types of conflict. Um, one of the negative types of conflict is the value conflict stemming from differences in values such as the politics, religion, uh, ethics, uh, norms, and other beliefs. And this should be totally avoided within the workplace uh, as it has a negative impact on performance. It does not offer any uh, opportunity to enhance the development of new strategies in a certain institution. Another negative type of conflict is the relationship conflict or uh, uh, the personal conflict, which uh, arises from interpersonal issues. And worth mentioning, um, the personality preferences, differences in personality preferences can aggravate this type of personal conflict and again it should be avoided and this can be overcome by capacity building within the institution and enhancing the communication skills and uh, uh, teaching the MTI um, um, uh, a tool uh, to the students and our faculty members. Another type of conflict is the task conflict. It arises from disagreement about the tasks within a team, so it can have a positive impact if properly managed, as it can increase our understanding to the tasks and promotes the critical thinking within a team. Another type is the process conflict, and again, it can be a functional constructive conflict when it is properly managed as it supports uh, the goals and uh, the change uh, in the institution. Now we should know what is the conflict spirals and how a conflict can uh, be aggravated and breaches the crisis. Actually, conflict spirals are the interactions in which Cumulative behaviors by one or more of the team members coupled with the improper interpretations of these behaviors can result in escalating destructive behavior and can end in a crisis. It, the, the, the process can start by an event that has a negative impact on the feelings of the team member and again, another incident increases and uh, causes cumulative effect of negative feelings uh, that is aggravated by negative behavior from this team member and causes the incident to expand and then finally to uh, uh, end in a crisis or what's called the tornado. Uh, conflict escalation is a gradual transformation from amateur level of emotional interaction, such as the cooperation between the team members, that gradually transforms into an immature level of emotional interaction. It can start with cooperation, then turns into competition, then to assume deliberate action, get defensive, look for support, and then uh, rely on assumptions. And here we are gradually transforming into immature 
level of emotional interaction so that uh, uh, we rely on assumptions uh, uh, that uh, uh, affects our observations and then our um, interactions then the team member personalizes and stereotype uh, uh, other team members ending in what is called the tornado uh, this can require an outside help to resolve this conflict escalation tornado demonstrates how conflict can quickly escalate out of control and always remember these words hurt people hurt people so we need always a healthy wise conflict management models as conflict is always will be a part of our workplace environment it's important that all faculty members can manage conflict and be able to express their opinions in an appropriate way handling conflict and the use of healthy conflict management tools through modeling and educating the use of appropriate and interprofessional behavior can boost the institutional goals so what are the models for conflict management uh, actually the uh, models uh, for conflict management are based on two uh, preferences or two types of um, uh, attitude uh, the first is the assertive attitude or self-concern it's what I am concerned with myself uh, the other preference is the cooperative preference where we concern for the others and for the team and institutional goals um, based on these two preferences the uh, uh, Thomas Kuhlman conflict model instrument or the TKI model is elaborated uh, there are persons who are highly assertive low cooperative these are the competitive models um, so the uh, another uh, style is the low assertive has low self concern but is also low cooperative so this is the avoidance model uh, a third model is the collaborative model where there is a high cooperative high self-concern or high assertive style this style uh, uh, prefers the win-win situation in conflict management uh, a fourth style is the accommodation style where uh, the person is highly cooperative with low assertion so he has low self-concern and uh, uh, do what others want him to do this is the accommodation model and there is an intermediate model between these four models which is the compromise model sometimes we use the animal uh, models for uh, making uh, things easier uh, the com competitive model is like the shark uh, he is concerned for himself and not for the others the owl the wise owl always uh, uh, prefers the win-win situation the tortoise avoids the conflict and the teddy bird is uh, uh, highly cooperative with low self concern and in the intermediate zone there is the fox where this is the compromise model each one of us has his preferences and uh, uh, can um, uh, have one or more models uh, 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 dominating over the others but also the situation uh, or the context of the conflict can affect our model so I can be an owl or I, I have I like to uh, have a win-win situation when this conflict is important for me 
and I uh, can tend to avoid the conflict if I have no concern for this type of conflict, such as uh, what we said uh, before that we should avoid the value and the personal conflict. So uh, uh, each one of us can have more than one model. We have a preferred model or two, but also we can rely on other models according to the context. Uh, we need to do uh, uh, the TKI tool or test ticket to uh, identify our preferred uh, uh, type of or model or style of conflict management. Another tool that is important uh, in understanding the conflict and uh, to identify the roots of the conflict arising in workplace is the MTI tool, which is a personality assessment that reports preferences on four different domains. Uh, um, the four different domains are introversion uh, versus extraversion, sensing versus intuition, thinking versus feeling, and judging versus um, perceiving. Uh, these four dimensions uh, are about where do we get our energy from? It's different from the extrovert. Uh, to the introvert, the extrovert has uh, the energy from the others, where the introvert has his own inner motivation. Uh, there, what kind of information? How can I get my information? It's sensing versus intuition. And uh, how do I make the decision? Thinking versus feeling. And how do we deal with the world? Are we judging or perceiving. Actually, these four preferences affect our attitude and decision making. The extroversion versus introversion, judging versus perceiving, affect our attitude towards the conflict. Whereas the sensing intuition, thinking versus feeling, affects our decision making and uh, in, uh, through uh, during the um, conflict management. Uh, so it's important for uh, us in the uh, healthcare professionals and as the leaderships to uh, identify these two tools, the TKI tool and the MTI tool. Um, but we need to ask ourselves three questions before getting involved in a certain conflict. Firstly, does it mean to me? The second question, what is the type of conflict? Is it a value conflict? Is it a personal conflict? Is it a task conflict? Is it a process conflict? And then, do I have time and energy? for this type of conflict. And so this again uh, returns us to what we have previously said, that uh, every person of us can have more than one uh, model according to the context. And that some types of conflict should be avoided, such as the personal and value conflicts in the workplace. Uh, this makes us flexible when dealing with conflicts and uh, makes the, uh, us uh, deal with the conflicts in a positive manner. We can um, uh, be involved in conflicts that will enhance and boost the performance within our institutions and avoid the types of conflict that are destructive for oneself and for the others. Again, we should ask ourselves, ourselves before uh, getting involved in a conflict. Does it mean me? What's the type of conflict? And lastly, do I have the time and energy for this involvement? Is it worthy? 
And then we come to uh, another step, how to break the conflict cycle before it reaches the tornado. Um, on breaking the conflict cycle, each one should speak to himself and then with the others. Firstly, when I speak to myself, I should identify the source of the conflict. Always there are something beyond the incidents, the root of a conflict. It's not the incident that creates the conflict, but what is behind the, uh, the scene. Uh, it's the inner feelings of the personnel that can affect the aggravation of the conflict. And then I should, you should understand your model. What is your model? And control what you can control. Lastly, be patient before talking to the others. It's okay to be wrong. The second step is dealing with the conflict with others. We should establish common vocabulary. We should be collaborative when speaking and request the solution from the team. There are four main steps for uh, the uh, conflict management. The first step is the assessment of the conflict. Think and listen about the disagreement and what uh, and agree on the common issues. Ask what's behind this conflict and why the issue is a problem and why do we need to resolve it? And we should agree on what each one needs to solve uh, the conflict. The second step is the intervention. After the assessment of the condition, we should do our intervention. We can offer several solutions that could resolve the issue, then collaborate to select the best solution to the issue with, uh, uh, with the help of our team. The second, third um, step is the resolution. Make sure everyone has his gains. Then bring closure by kind words and confirmation on each one's role. Finally, the maintenance step that requires us to follow through our commitments. Effective leadership needs us to uh, be familiar with uh, the conflict models in addition to uh, developing skills in how to appropriately manage conflicts to enhance change and accomplishments to our institutions. We should avoid avoiding conflict. We should foster uh, 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 avoid fostering uh, unhealthy competition. Um, we should avoid seeing uh, only the wrong uh, in our team. Uh, uh, the leader should also avoid taking all the credit to himself and control everything uh, and or uh, uh, focus exclusively on the goals and not uh, uh, keeping in mind uh, the uh, healthy work environment and mental health of the team members. So finally, what's next? What do we need to do now? We need to identify our conflict style. There are tests to identify our uh, preferred uh, styles and uh, we should uh, re again um, remember that we can uh, be flexible and move from one style to another according to the context. Uh, and now we can um, uh, also uh, know how our conflict style varies in different contexts and relationships. Thank you.